I'm honoured and pleased to have an Arsenal legend in the building, David Seaman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. Dean, can you hear me? No way. <laughs> <laughs> It was larger than life in every way, and he was a hero, not just with the fans, but with the players as well. They all loved him. He was that good that in training, Steve, Steve Bold and Tony Adams, that he would embarrass them and they would try and kick him yeah. to, to slow him down a bit, and they couldn't catch him. <laughs> the ponytail on the head. <laughs> but I was born with Natasha. <laughs> I remember seeing an Arsenal team celebrating game four, yeah. and I was like, oh. Talk to them, quite a little way here. You know, we've done what we did. It's their time to go and create their own history. I'm here with Tossin. We've just witnessed a, a, a very eventful game, I think it's fair to say. Arsenal won, Brighton won. And I'm just going to ask you straight off the bat, was that two points dropped or a point gained given the sending off of Declan Rice? Absolutely two points dropped. Because even after the sending off of Declan Rice, we dropped it. We, we were still winning. We gave away a cheap goal, in my opinion, and we didn't take our chances to extend. Um, we didn't take our chances to go back in the, to go back in the lead. Sorry. And on the sending off, I've got to ask you, what was your views on that? Do you think the referee got it right? He had no choice? Or do you think he should have applied some more discretion? Was you annoyed about the fact that there's the issue of consistency regarding the referee yeah. because moments before that we saw Pedro kick the ball away in a kind of similar circumstance. I just want consistency. Is that all, is that too much to ask for in this league? I mean, um, when like you see Jao Pedro, he kicks the ball away in the first half, ref does absolutely nothing. Even before Rice, fair enough, they're going to say the rules. Yeah, 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 Rice, fair enough, if that's the rules. But what about Veltman, what he does to Rice before then? He like, he's, that's gamesmanship. He deliberately kicks the ball at Declan, waiting for a response, waiting for a reaction. I think he knows what he's doing. Um, so, and plus, not just that, but let's not forget the home game we played against Wolves, where my man, is it Mosquera, was going around groping people. Bruv, groping people, pinning people down. Like, this is like, what is this? What, this is what Sadio Masochist, what type of footballer, like, what's he doing? But nothing, not even a yellow, not even a talking to, absolutely nothing. So I'm just thinking, Where's the consistency in this league? It doesn't make sense. There is a school of thought, though, that says that Declan Rice doesn't really give the referee too much choice because, obviously, he got the yellow uh, with a bad tackle, let's be honest, in the first half. And in this incident here, there are some people that would say, and I'm not necessarily saying that, I'm putting it to you, so I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but there's mm -hmm. some people that say, look, Declan Rice is an experienced player. If Beltman kicks a ball towards him, he should avoid that situation. Yeah, he should, but that situation's happened like a million times. It happens a million times each season. Nothing, absolutely nothing. I've seen situations where players are in a yellow and they do a foul that definitely warrants another yellow. But because the ref knows, hey, I've just booked you and you've just done this in like the first two to five minutes of the first, second half, it's fine. But the next one you do, I'm sending you off. I feel like refs have that kind of unwritten rule. But now all of a sudden people want to fling up, yeah, this is the rules, it's the rules. But I never, I never see this applied to other teams but yeah I don't even want to spend time talking about this because that's not the reason why we lost well it feels like a loss why we drew the game well I can see you're angry about that so let's move on um in terms of the performance I mean it's kind of difficult to discuss the performance without talking about the sending off because it it played such a pivotal part in the game because I would argue that in the first half also actually played well they got off to a great start you saw yeah. Saka roasting the fullback Hinchwood you're thinking yeah it's all good and then that happens but in terms of the way the rest of the game panned out, what's your thoughts on it? I thought the response to the sending off initially was good. I think that first 10 to 15 minutes after the sending off, I thought we defended well. Um, I, granted, we conceded a sloppy goal. Um, defence split and pass. Gabriel should probably do better. He doesn't. But um, I thought we responded well in terms of we had the chances, but we just didn't take them. And this is where, like, I remember seeing in the first half, I'm like, OK, we started this well. You've got to make it count. We have, we, there's too many games, especially at home, where we did it against Wolves. We, we, we were up 1-0, but we should have been up like 2-3-0. And you're just thinking, this, these are the fine margins that cost you when, when it comes to squeaky bum time at the end of the season. Yeah, I think that's a fair point to make. So do you think then with the signing of Raheem Sterling, do you think that's something that can address that? Absolutely. I think it does. Because um, say what you want about him, in the box... I like, what I like about Sterling, he's direct. 
he's gonna do something. He's he's not gonna be like chicken little trying to like score the perfect goal. He doesn't need to do that. He's gonna go in there and he's gonna either take his man on or force a, or force a goal attempt, which is what you want to see from the Havertz. From I mean, Havertz did a great job with that in the second half, but you want to see him put that away, bro. Put that away. And even first half, there's so many openings we had. You're just thinking, stop trying to be cute. Just smash the ball in. Just do something. And I've got to ask you about Leandro Trossard because there was a big debate going on last week. He got that goal. Uh, there was that lack of celebration, call it what you want. And a lot of people saying, look, he's got to start this week. To be fair to the manager, he started him. What did you think of his performance today? Anonymous. <laughs> he was anonymous. And um, this happens all the time. It's funny, this time last season, we played Fulham. And I was at that match. And I was one of those because I'd seen Trossard do this. I'm always clamoring for him to start. And he starts and he puts in a terrible performance. And I'm just like, why is this guy starting? We should bring on Martinelli. And I'm thinking, surely it's not going to happen today. It did. He did nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's just better as a sub. He's a Solskjaer. He's a... <laughs> give me, give me, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Giroud impact player off the bench, but he's not a starter. Okay, okay. And just, I don't, I don't want to harp on about it, but it is a meaningful question. The sending off of Denkin Rush today means that he will not feature against Tottenham uh, after the international break. I was going to say, what's your thoughts on that? And who would you like to see come in for him? Um, if Marino wasn't injured, I wouldn't be too bothered. But now that Marino's injured and now we miss him, it's difficult. I don't think you play a guy like Ethan in a game that big. It's going to have to be Jorginho and Partey, which may suit us. Maybe we'll have much more control in that. In, we'll have much more, what's, that, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe Jorginho will be free to actually be like a Verratti type, metronome, Perlo type. Pro, playing progressive passes and party can do all the dirty work. Maybe it could work for us, but I'm choosing to be optimistic about that. He's a big blow, but Jorginho, party and Odegaard is a good midfield. Talking of Odegaard, what do you think of Odegaard today? Because there, there's a school of thought that said he wasn't quite at it today. He did take a couple of knocks. It was quite a physical, niggly game. Yeah. Um, how do you think he played? Uh, he was average. He was average. Um, yeah, he was average. I don't think he's had a... He's had, I don't think he's had a good start to the season, but it's typical. I think he starts slow. It was the same last season and people were getting on his back from, what is it, end of October stroke November onwards to the end of the season. Best attacking midfield, in my opinion, in the league. So, And I think the injury hampered him. You could see it. I, like, what makes Erdegaard a great player is not just his quality on the ball, his quality off the ball. He presses like a monster. But the minute that, that t challenge went in, he wasn't pressing with the same intensity you see a Martin Erdegaard usually press with. So that tells me there was an issue. OK, then, so looking forward, I mean, you know, I, I don't like to look forward too much. But listen, we, the international break is upon us and we've got that big game looming in a couple of weeks against Tottenham. Mm. How would you like to see the team configured for that game? Would you like to see Sterling start or how would you yeah, approach it? Then? I, would, I would play that exact same team. Obviously take out Rice for Jorginho and take out Trossard for Sterling. I think Sterling should come in and start. He's better than Martinelli. He's better than Trossard. The only winger in our team that's better than him is Bukayo Saka. There's zero reason why he shouldn't start. That sounds quite affirmative. And just on that as well, with the whole transfer window thing, I haven't had a chance to yeah. ask you what the transfer window in terms of how people are going to perceive it or how you perceive it. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's been a successful transfer window? What would you give it out of 10? So? <sighs> successful. It would have been successful if we got a striker. Um, I'll give acceptable. So I give it like a 7.5 out of 10 window because, look, we added a winger who is, in my opinion, like I just said, he's the second best um, forward we've got after Saka in, in, the, in the team. Um, Calafiori, not our number one target, we got him. Other teams wanted him, but we got him. Marino, set our number two target, we got him. Even though his club were trying to shaft us, but we got him. He's going he's gonna to absolutely transform, in my opinion, our left side, right? So these are good signings that actually improve the team. You're just waiting for that striker sign and we didn't get it. But Sterling, no transfer fee or loan fee and his club are paying what half of his wages two-thirds of his wages whatever the amount is it's a plus for us and just finally uh three games as we go into the international break i think at the moment as we speak we're second in the table behind brighton <laughs> um what do you make of the start so far uh that's a tough one same old arsenal you know we should be should be nine but it's seven 
that's what I make of it. Is it's 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 the same old Arsenal. There's promise there, but it stays. No, there's potential there, but it stays potential. It doesn't make its journey from potential to promise. So that's what I make of it. Okay, Chelsea, thank you very much.